Today, I'm gonna be talking about three mistakes I made when I first got into freelance and art licensing work, and I was pitching my surface pattern design portfolio to various art directors trying to get paid surface pattern design work. Before I jump into those mistakes, I wanted to tell a quick story about my childhood that examines some of the mistakes you can make as a young entrepreneur, but also looks at the positive side of trying to sell something to other people. So let me tell you a story about nine-year-old Elizabeth Silver. I was born one day and I decided to take on that kid's entrepreneurial trope and make a cool, refreshing, fruity beverage to sell in my front yard. But I don't know if we were out of country time lemonade mix or something, because for whatever reason, I decided to offer fruit smoothies instead of lemonade. I want to preface this to say that my mom was not home, a babysitter was watching us, otherwise she might have intervened in this plan. However, who doesn't love a smoothie, right? So what do you need for fruit smoothies? If you're nine, the answer is fruit and ice. So no worries, we had a fruit bowl full of plums, apples, oranges, some wilted grapes in the fridge, not a problem. Blended up, these fruits made considerably less smoothie than I expected. But don't worry, because we live on a dead end street, so the demand I knew wasn't gonna be that high. And so I ditched the regular size cups and I dug into the back of our cabinets and found those tiny little Dixie cups. And I brought them to the front yard with my pitcher and a small card table and some paper to make a sign with when I was out there. I tagged the smoothies at about 50 cents and sat in the heat for maybe 45 minutes, selling two cups to neighbors who took pity on me. And that was a wrap for my get rich quick scheme. Now, if you have ever bought produce or a smoothie, you can see that my plan was full of holes. First of all, the amount of produce that it takes to even create a Dixie's cup worth of smoothie definitely was selling at a loss, right? Second, ice and some plums doesn't make a good smoothie. It was brown and sludgy and it was not delicious. And when my mom came home, she wasn't that pleased that I used her entire produce, all the groceries in order to make a single dollar. So yes, I made some mistakes in my smoothie venture, but I also got some things right as a young entrepreneur. And the first thing that I did correctly was I didn't let two little products stop me, right? I saw that I wasn't gonna fill up that whole cup, got smaller cups, no big deal, problem solved. The second thing that I did which I admire looking back at this story, is that I made the sign and sold the thing while I was already out there selling. I didn't spend a month setting up my LLC and spending you know, all morning working on a poster board that was just right proportions and super straight and as pretty as I could possibly make it. I just went out there, sat in my front lawn and offered what I had. And the third thing that I think I did right is I didn't second guess what I had to offer. I understood that the plum juice that I had created was not as good as a pink Jamba Juice type confection, but who doesn't love fruit and ice on a hot day? You know, if you're hot, it's a drink, right? It works. And plus comparison is a thief of joy. So I just went for it. But what does that have to do with reaching out to art directors and what I'm going to be talking about in this video? Well, I think I could spell out some of the metaphors here. <laughs> Clearly, I did make some mistakes. Um, but the general idea is that there is no resource on the internet, including this video, that will save you from making some mistakes when you're pitching yourself. And that is okay, all right? You have to learn those things yourself. I'm hoping that some of the principles I'm gonna show you today are things that will help you do a better first pitch, but we're all learning as we go along, and of course, practice makes progress. So let's check out three of the things that I did not so great <laughs> that I would definitely do differently now when I first started pitching my work to art directors. The first mistake I made when I started my freelance career was trying to cover all the categories. 
As I started to make lists of all the companies I could potentially work with, I had a spreadsheet filled with stationery companies, kidswear companies, home decor companies, wall art companies, and quilting fabric companies. Ask me how successful I was nailing all those categories. At the end of the day, your art sells your services, and I don't know what type of magical art that you create, but I have yet to design something perfectly suited for all of these categories simultaneously. So that means I had three good stationary collections, two that could work for kids wear, maybe two that worked for home decor, one that was proper wall art, and maybe four of those could also work for quilting. Do you see the math on this? It's not great. Another huge part of your strategy in getting work is consistent follow-up. Again, the odds were against me because it's hard to stay consistent and follow up on 75 potential leads. I was spreading myself way too thin. The other week I made a video on how choosing a product category is the best first step in moving forward in your surface pattern design career. So if you need further information, definitely go check that one out. But looking back through my old emails, I see that one of my best clients took me almost two years from first contact to first project. But my follow up through that time was very inconsistent. And so I'm confident that if I had been more regular in reaching out, I could have closed that time gap by a lot. The second mistake I made was starting with big name companies. When I just started freelancing, I had left a job designing prints for one of America's most recognizable clothing brands. And as a result, I was not scared to pitch my services to West Elm and Land of Nod and other huge companies. There isn't anything inherently wrong with this. In fact, we should all be so confident in our pitching. But the truth is that there are thousands of companies creating art for the products you love that you've never even heard of. And it's a lot easier to stand out when approaching one of those smaller companies than trying to make an impression at a company that has 14 design departments to cover all their products. So dig deeper in your researching of companies that need artwork, and you're likely to find more success, especially as you're just getting started in your service pattern career. I know that once I went a little bit deeper in my research, that is when I started making the connections that led to client work. My third mistake was I did not keep it brief. My emails were way too long. So marketing experts are always talking about speaking to your ideal audience and figuring out what their pain points are. I've spent eight years trying to figure out what it is that art directors need and how to provide value. And the best that I can tell is they need art and they need time. So our entire job is to create something beautiful and save art directors time while we do it. If you're acting like a pitch email is a college application and giving your whole history, it's wasting your time in writing it and it's wasting their time in reading it. I know that getting up the courage to reach out directly to a company you want to work with is hard and it can lead to wanting to say all the things. Trust me, I clearly have a problem with talking too much, but you really want to make your email count. And I can say with authority, that too long is no good. I was absolute rubbish at keeping it brief when I started. Like war and peace was shorter than some of my cold pitch emails. Don't make the same mistakes as me. Just for fun, I dug up an old pitch email that I edited only slightly to take out all the you know qualifying details. And I'm gonna show you it. It's my actual email and we're going to see why this is way too long. So like strap in, you know, maybe go get a snack because this is gonna be a minute, right? All right, my name is Elizabeth Silver and I'd like to introduce myself as a seasoned textile designer available for freelance print and CAD work. I spent the bulk of my career designing for home decor and I've seen firsthand that when deadlines get tight, good freelance help, help can be hard to find. Okay, that part, pretty good start. It could be a little snappier, but all right. I think that you're the right person to send along my info to, but if I'm mistaken, please feel free to forward this to anyone within your company that would be in charge of hiring freelancers. Okay, not necessary. Okay, you send it to who you send it to. You could put this as a PS maybe at the end, but definitely not important up front. I've attached a few examples of my work. I have an extensive portfolio just for home goods that I'd love to forward if you'd like to see more. I also have an online portfolio at esilverdesign.com, which can give you a sense of my range, but it leans towards the modern juvenile style and doesn't fully represent my home decor experience. Okay, so let's take a pause there. If I had 
niche down and said I was all about home decor, I wouldn't have to explain away the fact that my artwork didn't look very home decor-ish on my website, right? Because all my artwork would look home decor-ish. Or I wouldn't be pitching to home decor, I'd be pitching to somebody that made more sense for modern juvenile style that I had. So there, right there I could have gotten rid of that whole paragraph because I would have been more on point. So as a staff artist at both West Point Home and Town and Country Living, I had hands-on experience with the market and now work on a freelance basis designing for a number of different creative needs and end products. I design for licensed brands, including Disney in the past, and I'm very familiar with that aspect of the market. I'm knowledgeable and equally happy working in every phase of design, including blah, 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 blah. Five bullet points, people. Do I need five bullet points? The whole point of bullet points is they are quick. It took me a paragraph to get to the bullet points, and there's five of them, okay? Cut it out, too much. Among design directors, I developed a reputation for my ability to easily grasp a problem and quickly create a solution. Blah, 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 testimonial, testimonial. Okay, that is good. Great that I have this testimonial in here, but it's not necessarily the most important thing in an email. Uh, these days, I put my testimonials on a hidden page in my website and I just kind of link to them and I say, you know, I have a reputation for making quick solutions and then just kind of put a link there, um, that will make the email shorter. And whether your print department needs a little extra help to finish off a big project or a whole new experience perspective on design problems, I'm available to help. Please contact me at blah, 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 blah. Thanks very much. More resume, more portfolio images. Okay. I'm tired, guys. It's time for a nap. <laughs> Nobody has time to read all this. They're between meetings, they're presenting, they're looking through all this art, they have tons of deadlines. They don't have time to read this long thing. I don't even have time to read it, and this is my YouTube channel, okay? Like, give me a break, we have better things to do. Of course, all these mistakes were great learning opportunities, and I have no regrets on stumbling my way through those early pitches. Remember that art directors are people too, and they understand that designers aren't salespeople. Make pretty things, send them out, and do it again. Every iteration will be easier. If you're curious about some of the things I did right when I first started, I'm spilling my most successful strategies in my free masterclass, Find Your First Surface Pattern Design Client. I'm hosting this class live in the next few weeks, so check out the description for more information on that. Also, you can follow me at eSilverDesign or head to elizabethsilver.com backslash blog, and there's all kinds of information about starting your surface pattern business, so go check that out. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I will see you next time.